All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Shauna Shapiro, who is in Texas. How are you doing, Shauna? I'm well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Excellent. And Sean is a best-selling author, speaker, professor, PhD in clinical psychology, internationally recognized expert in mindfulness and self-compassion. And that's actually what we want to talk about today. We want to talk about the concept of mindfulness and self-compassion or, or self-kindness. Because uh, as we were discussing just before coming on air, is that I think that people collectively have been through a period of self-reflection over the, during 2020, enforced self-reflection in many ways. But I think as a result of that, uh, the concepts of mindfulness and self-kindness, those are, are things that I think people are discovering, but maybe not understanding fully. So maybe if we start with mindfulness, uh, mm -hmm. when you talk about mindfulness, Shauna, what, what do you mean? Right. So mindfulness is about being present. It's about learning how to train and stabilize our attention in the present moment. You know, people often say that time is our most valuable resource. It's not. Our attention is our most valuable resource. Mm -hmm. And so part of mindfulness is learning how to focus um, our attention on what we care about. What, you know, you said people have been reflecting a lot on what do I care most about? What do I value? What's most important in this life? And so mindfulness is about kind of realigning with our compass, learning how to pay attention and learning how to pay attention with kindness and curiosity. What's really interesting is when we pay attention and we're judging, like, I like this, I don't like this, mm -hmm. it's good, this is bad. It shuts down the learning centers of the brain and actually inhibits us from creativity, from memory, from making new associations. And so what mindfulness does is by paying attention with kindness, we bathe our system in dopamine, we turn on the learning centers of the brain, and we give ourselves the best kind of possibility of responding wisely to stress and also just to our everyday lives. And, and yeah, and it's fascinating. And, and this, the other part of this is that it kind of runs counter to the per pervasive popular culture, which is all about distraction. And, and to be honest, it's all focused on ourselves, right? And our, and our devices and, and, sh and snippets and short bursts of things. And, and I'm talking to you, but I'm not really paying attention to you. Cause I mean, I have my device here and I'm kind of texting. Oh, well, I'm paying attention to you. So, so this is running kind of counter to that whole pervasive culture but it's so incredibly important. So, uh, you know, what do you say to what do you say to that? How do we overcome that uh, that cultural imperative that seems to be out there? Yes, and you're exactly right that that we don't recognize the value, the kind of preciousness of our attention, and it gets fragmented and distracted, and we're multitasking. Research shows that when you multitask, you release cortisol in the body, so you make yourself sick. That's a stress hormone. You make twice as many mistakes, and it takes you three times as long. There's there's no win, and yet we are bombarded by this kind of deluge of of information and stuff pulling our attention from the outside. And then on top of that, our minds wander on average 47% of the time. This was research mm -hmm. done by Harvard. If you're listening right now, you might've noticed your mind has already wandered off. And so part of what mindfulness does is it gives us this superpower skill of actually focusing our attention and directing it where we most want it to be. And as I said before, this is your greatest asset, whether you're a leader, whether you're a parent, um, that this is the most important thing that we can bring to our life. So what are some of the ways that you can start to train yourself or to, to practice mindfulness? Because it seems to me from what you're saying, and it, it, it's very fascinating, I think critical, what you're talking about here is this, this is obviously an antidote to a lot of the stress and, and stress related sickness and, and, and psychological issues that people are, are kind of struggling with now. But I'm sure a lot of people probably don't know how to start to be, to be mindful. Yes. So you put it perfectly. This, this really is an antidote. And what 40 years of research, scientific studies show is that this is good for you. 
that it improves your immune system, it increases your happiness, it helps you sleep better, it even protects the end of your DNA and slows down the aging process. So this practice of mindfulness is good for you, but we're often wondering, how do I start? So the first way to begin is learning how to first set your intention. Why is this important to you? That motivation is what helps people. So maybe you wanna be more present, maybe you wanna sleep better, maybe you want less stress, more ease. The second step is your attention. And this is learning how to train your attention in the present moment over and over again. So the mind wanders off and you bring it back. And the best way to focus is on your breath. So even as you're listening right now, you can just feel your breath going in, your breath going out. And then finally, it's with this attitude of kindness. So when your mind wanders off, instead of beating yourself, it's like a little puppy dog. It wanders and you're like, come back, come back. And it wanders again and you say, stay. And as you practice this, what happens is you're carving out these neural pathways of attention and they're growing stronger. That's really the definition of neuroplasticity is that whatever you practice grows stronger. So mindfulness, it's just like going to the gym and exercising, but it's a mental training and it's something you want to practice every day. Yeah, and, and it's and to be honest, the way you've outlined it there, it it's fairly simple what you're talking about. And now I'm not equating simple with easy. I always make that distinction because just because something simple doesn't mean it's easy. And it takes a little bit of discipline and application, clearly, to <laughs> do that. Um, but but the other part that you said there, which I think is is the other fascinating part, is the self kindness. Because yeah, because we're often we often have intentions. You talked about in intention there. We have intentions to do things. And then we don't do them or we don't do them consistently. And then we beat ourselves up pretty much guaranteeing that we're never going to try it again. Exactly. And this is the reason people don't change. It's not because they can't change. It's because they're missing this one crucial ingredient, self-compassion. That is what actually breaks this cycle of judgment and shame. And what it does, as I mentioned, is it turns on the learning centers of the brain. It gives you the resources to actually make the changes that you need. And so when you look at the science, people who are more self-compassionate, they exercise more, they stick to their diet better, they go to the doctors when they're supposed to. And what's interesting is they're rated as more generous and kind to others. A lot of times people are afraid if they're compassionate with themselves, it's selfish. It actually makes you more forgiving, more empathic, and more compassionate with others. Yeah, because, and, and that's, that's fascinating because sometimes you do feel like when, when people are tough on themselves or when we're tough on ourselves, really, in some ways we're giving ourselves, it almost, we do it to almost make ourselves feel better because it gives us an excuse then, you know, to say, well, yeah, I should have done that and I'm, I'm really lazy and I should have blah, blah, blah. Um, but in reality, we're not taking action to address it. We're just saying something. Exactly. It actually, this is, this was one of the most interesting studies is that self-compassion actually helps people take more accountability and actually make more repairs. So they did a study at Stanford university and they found that people who are more self-compassionate or were given instructions to be self-compassionate were more likely to make repairs or make amends when they had made a mistake. And I find that fascinating that, that when we're hard on ourselves, it actually locks us into the mistake we've made. It actually takes mm -hmm. us off the hook because we're then we're sitting there pouting or beating ourselves up instead of going back and apologizing, you know, to my son for yelling at him. Right. No, and it's it's fascinating because that's so it's it's almost counterintuitive, or it is counterintuitive in many ways. Is that being compassionate to yourself, as opposed to being hard on yourself, being compassionate to yourself actually can lead you to doing more and actually getting yourself on track. Absolutely, it it makes you more productive, is what the research shows. It shows that it increases learning, motivation, um, innovation, and the other thing is that it improves relationships. That being compassionate with yourself it's good for you and it's good for the culture of the company and the culture of the family. No, no, absolutely. And I think then what you're, what you're talking about here, particularly about mindfulness and, and, and self-kindness, I mean, I think this, obviously this uh, translates into the work situation and, and particularly if, you know, a lot of the people who listen to um, this or watch this are, are in sales. And that is the one thing that I think so many people struggle with is the attention piece. It's like really paying attention to the other person. And let's face it, what is, what is the one thing that we will, we will all feel 
validated and valued for it's when we when we know somebody is actually listening to us and not just sort of not just listening in a physical sense but lift, listening in an active sense absolutely and if you notice my my phone went off there was a little ping right in the middle of when you were talking yeah. it, it was so perfect because that's what happens all the time yeah is that these little beeps and pings take our attention away and people feel it you know i we we have four children and if the phones are out, you can feel they're constantly looking like, is this going to take mom away from me? Is there something mm. better? And what mindfulness does is I think it really trains us in how to be great leaders, how to be great salesmen, how to be great parents, is that it teaches us how to pay attention and how to really stabilize and focus our attention and stay connected to what we value most. Yeah, and I think that the concept you're just saying of connected uh, to what we value most, because we just allow ourselves to fly in different directions. It's funny, because people will often say to me today is like, oh, my goodness, the pace of business. I'm busier than I've ever been. And I always kind of counter that with, are you though, or are you more distracted than you've ever been? Because there's a difference between the two, that if you actually eliminated a lot of these distractions, do you actually still have plenty of time to get the, the critical things done? I think that's such a good point. In fact, there was a study done in 2012 that revealed that we're bombarded with the equivalent of more than 40 gigabytes of in incoming information every day. So this is about three to four, um, the, an average HD movie is about three to four gigabytes. So that's like trying to watch 10 to 13 movies a day. Like you simply can't do it. And so we need to have a better sorting system. Again, of what's most important? What are my priorities? Where do I want to place this most precious resource. No, I, I, absolutely. And I think that that's a fascinating um, statistic there that you just quoted, <laughs> the amount of information that's that's coming at us. And and as we were saying that if you really want to, uh, if you really want to connect with somebody and, and really make them feel validated, whether it's in a business sense or in a personal sense, it's obviously paying attention and really listening to what they they have to say. And that's and that's something as we talked about earlier, that you have to start training yourself to do again, because unfortunately, it has it, I'm not sure if it ever was an innate skill, but it certainly is a, is a neglected one. Absolutely. And it's, it's interesting because in our culture, in our society, we, we all agree that working out is good for you. You know, physical mm. fitness, it makes sense. But there's this kind of lag in mental fitness that we need yeah. to be training our mind and training our brain in how to pay attention. And the research is clear. People who practice mindfulness, the areas of their brain that have to do with focus, memory, attention, learning, they're bigger and stronger. It's called cortical thickening. It's just like your muscle gets bigger and stronger when you go and lift weights. And so we need to recognize that this is something we can cultivate. It's something we can practice. Yeah, and, and I think that's a great uh, great point to underline because I think sometimes people think when they hear something like mindfulness, you know, they go, yeah, it sounds a bit fluffy. Um, but what you're, yeah, but I mean, but what you're just outlining here is, is a huge amount of benefits and actually that there is physical and physiological benefits to it as well. Absolutely. That's why I became a professor and have spent 20 years studying the science is that science is what we need to motivate us to have faith mm -hmm. in it. And sometimes truthfully, I'll be sitting and meditating and, you know, there'll be a book chapter I'm supposed to be writing and laundry I'm supposed to do and the kids homework and I'll like recite all the benefits. I'll be like, right now I'm improving my immune system and I'm helping my cortisol levels and I'm going to sleep better and I'm going to be a more loving mother. And just mm -hmm. kind of that little pep talk helps me dedicate my time to this practice. And, and that, uh, that reinforces what you're saying about the inten intentions. I mean, I think, and I think that's part of the problem that we have today is that I'm not sure people know uh, what their intentions are. I'm not even sure they often know why they're doing what they're doing. And I think this is, I mean, hopefully if there is a by, if there is a positive byproduct of, of what's happened this year, maybe it's given people time to start thinking about why do I do what I do? Yeah. What you said it perfectly. We, we forget why we're doing what we're doing. We get on automatic pilot and we're going through the motions and what mindfulness does is it pauses you and it wakes you up to what truly matters. Mm -hmm. And the point is, as well on top of that is not just um, not knowing what you're doing. There's another part of that too. And that's all, also doing what's expected of you mm -hmm. rather than doing what you want to do. And I think that there's a, there's a conflict there as well. Absolutely. And part of, for me, the greatest value of mindfulness is learning how to listen deeply to what you actually want 
and we're not so kind of confused and clouded by our cultural conditioning, by our parents, by our bosses, by that we actually know that we have trained this connection between our mind and our body to be able to listen, which very few people have. Yeah, and, and I think that's such a powerful point that I want to triple underline that there is, is we were talking about, you know, paying attention and being present and all of that. But the, the starting point is, is really paying attention, as you said, and, and listening to yourself, really discovering yourself, discovering, you know, how you think, what, what's important to you. And I just don't think a lot of people do that or, or and maybe people are afraid to do it or maybe they don't know how to do it. Or, as I said at the beginning, we live in a culture that doesn't encourage you to do that kind of thing. It, it, it's a very superficial, let's face it, shortcut culture that we live in. So going deep inside yourself is not something that's really encouraged. Right. And, and what I invite people is you don't have to go super deep, just 5% more. Just slow down 5% and listen 5% more. Just practice 5% more kindness toward yourself or 5% more focus and attention, and it'll start to grow. That's what we know from neuroplasticity. Whatever you practice grows stronger. Your repeated behaviors, your repeated thoughts, they shape your brain. So pause and make a commitment just to, just to do 5% more, and it'll start to shift the trajectory of your life. Yeah, and and I think that's a that's a great point as well. I I interviewed somebody a while back uh, who who went from being uh, lazy and overweight and never exercised right and decided to run a marathon. But you know how that person just started to train to run a marathon? He walked ten minutes a day. Then he walked fifteen minutes a day, and et cetera, et cetera, until. Uh, over time, he reached the point where he was actually able to complete marathons. And I think that's what you're just saying right there is that putting one, one foot in front of the other, just going 5%, a little 5% deeper inside yourself, listening to yourself a little bit more, being a little bit more mindful and growing it over time, because we're not going to turn into Buddhist monks overnight. Exactly. And nor do we necessarily want to. Yeah, I mean, of course. Mindfulness is an in innate human capacity, mm -hmm. and it's a way of being that all of us can cultivate. And we yeah. really do need to free ourselves from that myth of perfection and just begin where we are. I mean, I think one of the most hopeful messages of neuroscience is that no matter what mistakes you've made, no matter what has happened to you, you always have the power to begin again and to literally physically re-architect the very structure of your brain. It's never yeah. too late. No, and and to be honest, if there's one person you probably can help and fix and work on, it's yourself. Other people are a little tougher, and quite frankly, uh, uh, but you 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 need to start with yourself. And as you're saying, I mean, this isn't. I didn't. I said this is this is simple stuff. It's not easy stuff, but there are easy baby steps you can start to to um, to undertake that will help you get uh, help you lay a foundation. Absolutely. And in fact, I recently wrote a, a new book and in the book are science-based practices that just take five minutes a day that can start to change the way your brain perceives and relates to the world. And I think that's the key is to really begin where you are. Yeah. And just in, in conclusion, I mean, I think these messages are, are, to be honest, I think they're extremely powerful. I think they're extremely timely. I think we have seen this year and in, in recent years from a number of different angles, the amount of turmoil and angst there is in the world, uh, in people's personal lives, in political life, in work life, all of the above. And I think that if if people just took a little bit of time to do what you're talking about, I think the ripple effect over society would be immense. I love what you just said, and it's so important that we're never just practicing for ourselves, that everything we do has echoes in this world. And that starting with just one breath, right? Just mm -hmm. this moment is going to have an impact. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, Shauna, this has been fantastic. All of Shauna's information is going to be below, be below this video. Uh, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself. Um, thank you. You can reach me at drshaunashapiro.com. I always respond if you have questions. Um, on my website, there are free meditations, free research articles, videos. And then I highly recommend my new book, Good Morning, I Love You, Mindfulness and Self-Compassion Practices to Rewire Your Brain. 
Thank Fantastic. You. And the book will be in the link below as well. So I, I encourage you to check it out. And I do think, I think this is, you're probably never going to get an opportunity like this time that we're living in now has, is, is, has given all of us for a little bit of self-reflection. So check out the book and start, invest a little in yourself invest a little bit in yourself and you'll you'll see the return all right listen thanks very much sean and my name is john golden sales pop online sales magazine pipeliner crm see you all for another interview really soon yeah.